What's up, kingdom family? Hey, everybody. I had to start with this song today. Enough. Welcome, 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 welcome. Hey, everybody. So if this is your first time at the kingdom, I want you to make sure you type in first time in the chat box so that we know that this is your first time here. That's it. I know the music's getting a little loud, so let me turn this down. And if you are not a first timer, I want you to type in where you're coming in from. I see so many of you are coming back for the first time in a little while. Welcome back, Catherine, and welcome back, Cindy, and Carrie, and Kathy, and Kelly, and Anna, and Barbara. My mom is here. Welcome, everybody. We are so excited. We are so excited to have you here. And when I'm saying we, it's because we have a very special guest today, and I would love to welcome you all today to the kingdom. And we're gonna jump right in today because we have a really powerful interview with one of my favorite people on the entire planet today that I, that I know you all know who it is because you probably saw the email. And I see you from New Jersey, Sonia, and my mom's in the Bay Area. Amazing, and we have Maui all over the world here, Kingdom family. Virginia, New York City, Washington. Hello, Emily and Janine, amazing. Tim, I love you, Hawaii, Alexandria, Vermont, amazing, all of you from all over the world. So here we are at the kingdom, and as we get started here today, I always like to just anchor us back into our belief statements here at the kingdom, why it is that we come together and the spirit that we come together in. And here at the kingdom, we believe that all beliefs are welcome here. We believe that all biologies are welcome here. We believe in the power of music to open our hearts and our minds, and we believe that wisdom can come from many places. So sometimes it'll be a spiritual text, sometimes it'll be science, sometimes it'll be a mix of the two. And we're here really to learn concepts that help take us closer to the truth of who we really are. And that's what we're here to do beyond any definition or categorization that we can place around these things. And here at the kingdom, we don't just honor or tolerate each other's differences, but we know that we are stronger because of those differences. When we come together in our differences, we know that we're stronger in all of that, we rise together. And so I see you, Tina, from Canada, and hello Jody from Rancho Cucamonga. My uncle lives there. Hello from Western Massachusetts. And hello Colleen and all the first timers and everybody who's here, we welcome you. Tulsa, Oklahoma, Jack, Oregon, North Carolina. Amazing, amazing, amazing. And so just so you all know how the kingdom works is we always start and we have kind of song or poem or music woven throughout. And then I'll guide us through a short prayer and at the end of my guided prayer, I'll give us about 60 seconds for you to welcome in your own personal prayer or your intention. And then we'll jump into the teaching, which today is gonna be an amazing interview, and then a little practice, and you'll take your golden nugget and an action that you can take away into your own life. And so, you know, today I thought, I wanted to kind of go back to our roots because I haven't read this in a while, and I just closed it on accident, so let me open it again. So I haven't read this in a while, but there was this poem that like came flying out of me when the idea for the kingdom kind of first came about. And I wrote this when I was actually at Esalen. And I'm gonna read this poem to you all again and just see how you feel it, especially those of you who've been here for a while, who've been coming, we're at our 34th week, which is so amazing. And those of you, some of you have been here every single week. And so see how we've been embodying these lessons and these teachings a little bit. So. Here it is. This is for everyone. Lesbian, gay, trans, bi, young, old, black and white. Queer, hippie, broke and fabulous and straight people too. All are welcome to the magic that happens. This is not about telling you what to believe but to connect you to something greater, to bring some relief. To the struggles and pain that carry us forward, you cannot stop us because we are the warriors. We'll come together, we'll sing and we'll cry, we'll learn and we'll share as we all turn the tides. You'll learn wisdom teachings from the world's greatest lessons. 
and connect to your power and call in your blessings. This isn't about inspiration. This is about action because only then can we break from this faction. Welcome to the kingdom, the kingdom inside. We rise together and together we rise. And so this is, it was part of what was like birthed with this whole thing. And I really feel that together in this community, we have been embodying these lessons of rising together, of knowing that we're stronger together, of being here in community with one another, of supporting one another, of celebrating each other's arts and each other's wins and each other's victories. And I wanna tell you a few things that have happened because of all of you. So check this out. So last week, we had Alonzo on as our special guest, who was a musician. And Alonzo had his first album coming out just a couple days after The Kingdom that we had last week. Now, I want you all to see, because I promised I would update you, and Alonzo's here in the chat box with us today. And Alonzo's album charted at number 14 on the iTunes charts. It charted at number 14. I don't know if you all can see this, but that is amazing. His album, Enough, charted at number 14, and you all made an incredible, incredible impact. I talked to him last night, and he told me that he was able to see the numbers that came through from all that we did, and you all did such an incredible job at helping our brother Alonzo have his first album launch with so much power. And so Alonzo, we love you. Kingdom family, celebrate Alonzo in the chat box. Throw your hands up, throw your emojis up. and. Here we are just knowing that we as a community can actually make a difference on each other's work, on each other's art. And this is how we create this mutually supportive community of care. And Alonzo, I'd love for you to post a link to your album again in the chat box if you would, uh, just in case anybody wasn't here last week and wants to check it out. And so we have one more thing coming up that we can make a big impact on and I'm super excited to tell you all about this. I'm gonna turn the music off for a second here just so you can make sure you hear me very, very clearly. So many of you know about this and some of you have already registered. So this coming Saturday, March 13th, let me see if I can just make this a lot bigger real quick so you guys can see it very clearly. So that's as big as I think I can do. So there we go. So this is a special thing that we are doing this coming Saturday, March 13th. And it is a benefit concert happening the day before the Grammy Awards, a pre-Grammy benefit concert that we're calling Love Over Fear. And what this is doing is it is raising money directly for children who have lost parents to COVID-19. There are hundreds and hundreds of stories, thousands of stories, it is out of control. We're getting a lot of the stories in right now for the show. And it's a music concert. So think of it kind of like one of those telethons, you know, where me, Alonzo, and an incredible Latino artist named Tito Rey, he's actually gonna be doing a, a song in Spanish as well, are coming together, queer artists of color coming together. We're doing it actually, not in person, meaning there won't be an audience, but we'll actually be together. We've been getting COVID tested every two days. We've been in rehearsals. We're in a sound stage with lights and the whole thing. And it's gonna be live streamed to all of you on a platform called Stage It. And so it's about a 60 minute show, 60 to 75 minute show. And 100% of all the ticket sales and all donations that come through during the show are going straight directly to families through Pandemic of Love, who many of you all know about, and COVID survivors for change. 100% of everything is going directly to the families. And so we're gonna have music, we're gonna have stories, we're gonna tell stories of some of the families in between, and I'm gonna do a big teaching that day, about a 10 minute teaching that day, on love over fear, and how it is that we can continue to choose love over fear, especially when times get tough. And so I wanna make sure you all know about that, and uh, I'm gonna put the link up in the chat for you as well, so you can register. And all you have to do is go on Stage It and create an account, and then you register. So here is the info. It's stageit.com slash we just will. And I'll put an even, that's my account there, and you'll see the concert listed there. And I'll put an even clearer link for some of you in the chat box right now. And even if you can't make it live, register. A hundred, it's pay what you can. 
So there's no ticket price. Pay what you can. 100% of what you give goes to charity. Some people have only even paid $2. So it's totally fine. Whatever you can give, it gives us all an opportunity to help. So this is the Love Over Fear concert that I'm putting a link for you to register in the chat box. And so I'm so, so, so excited about this. Please spread the word, share it with your friends, share it with your family. Let's get as many people on this as possible. And the big surprise is I'm actually premiering a brand new song called Believe on the show live. So a brand new song is gonna be released out to our community. And when that song comes out, we're donating 100% of the streaming royalties for that song directly to families and children for Pandemic of Love. So we're doing a lot to give back. And um, I'm so grateful that this community is here to do this deep work together. So now that all the announcements are out of the way, shall we take a moment to dive into our prayer? So go ahead and place your hands over your heart. Close your eyes if you feel comfortable doing so. And here at the kingdom, we like to put one hand over the heart and the, over your heart and the other over that hand. But if you feel more comfortable doing another mudra, like the traditional kind of prayer mudra, maybe one thing you can try is uh, putting your left thumb over your right in the back. This is a really beautiful energy seal when you're doing a traditional prayer mudra. So whatever feels comfortable to you. God, Spirit, Universe, all that is, all that ever has been, and all that ever will be, we thank you. Thank you for bringing this community together. Thank you for helping us to open our hearts and our minds, and thank you for helping us to remember and to trust our truth. To know what our truth is, to know when we are betraying ourselves, to know that even when we've betrayed ourselves, that even when we've fallen off track, that you will guide us home to ourselves. May each moment in our lives be a lesson. May any challenge that we're going through right now become a lesson. May we always be reminded of the power of who we are, and when we don't have our power, may we remember that we can come together and rely on the people that love us and the people that support us and this community and a power greater than ourselves, our ancestors. And so in this moment here and now, we call in all of our guides, all of the ancestors, all of the truth of this collective community and of us each as individuals, and we say yes. Yes to that dream that is birthing through us, yes to believing in ourselves more than we believe in our fears. Yes to our power. Yes to focus. Yes to coming back. Yes to letting go of the negativity. Negativity And yes to our yes. This is your moment now to welcome in your own personal prayer. I'll be silent for a moment and go ahead and welcome in your intention. God, Spirit, Universe, all that is, all that ever has been and all that ever will be, we thank you. May all the words that are spoken here today be used to benefit all in all. May we remember that this force that goes beyond any name that we can call you is always with us, guiding us home. So it is Ashe. Aho, Salam, Shalom, Amen, Satnam, Awen, Om. Thank you. Kingdom family, here we are. Have you arrived now? <laughs> I can feel you all here. I can feel you all here. And so, here we are having just such a gift that we get to come together in this way every week. Such a gift that we get to come together today each week. 
And I see somebody asked if our Love of a Fear concert is recorded. It's, uh, it's, it, there will be videos that we will put out, but the whole concert in total, we're gonna probably put out more little clips. So even if you can't attend live, come and support the, the families. Okay, so here we go. Today's lesson and today's session, oops, sorry, on the wrong slide, <laughs> is on the power of truth. The power of truth. And this is such an important aspect of not just our own lives, but especially what we're talking about. I just heard somebody said they hear static, uh-oh. So I'll see what I can do. But this is such an important part of our experience of what is happening in the world right now. Because we have so much conversation about truth and what is true and what is, what is not true and who is deciding what's truth and what's not truth in the first place and whose authority is that and do we even all have a truth that we're agreeing upon today? And what is our individual truth and how do we know when we're off track from that truth? And there is no one better there's literally no one better in the entire universe that I could think of to have this conversation with you today than my brother from another mother, Shannon Algio. So Shannon is an author. He is the host of the Soul Feed podcast, and he's an incredible teacher and leader. And he has a new book that just came out this past week called Trust Your Truth. And isn't it beautiful? <laughs> and so his book, and this is the link to get the book, is trustyourtruthbook.com, is all about learning to heal your self-doubt, awaken to your soul's purpose. And I love this part of the book type, the book subtitle, and live your badass life. <laughs> and so it's an incredible book. I've had the honor and the gift of reading this book from cover to cover when Shannon was actually in the process of writing it and getting the opportunity to actually write an endorsement for the book, which I don't do for that many books. And the reason why I did it for Shannon's book, not only is because he's such a good friend of mine, but because the book is the truth. Like what he gives you in the book is so incredibly important and so incredibly powerful. And so we have Shannon here with us today to guide us through this process of learning how to trust our truth. So hello, Shannon, 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 what's up? Hello! I'm so excited to be here with you, Justin, and everyone who's here. Hi. Hi to you. I'm so grateful. Oh. Thank you for having me. Yeah, Shannon, it's it's a gift, brother. It's like such a gift. You're amazing. Everybody in the chat box, hands up for Shannon. Remember what we do in our community. We throw our little hands up emojis in the chat box. If you hear me or Shannon say something that you really love, and if you don't have hands up emojis in your chat box and you just type the word hands up and we're here, Shannon, everyone's telling you hello. They're saying aloha and here we all are all together. So Shannon, aloha, I wanna, hello, I, yeah. I wanna jump like right in with you in, in a pretty big way um, about this concept of truth to start mm -hmm. off. Like trust your truth. And when you think of this and it right in the title of your book, the word truth, like, how do you even define that? And how have you come to define what truth even is in your own life? Yeah, what a great question. You know, truth is undefinable. And that's the first step to encountering the truth mm. is humbly acknowledging that you cannot define it, grab it, hold it, and make it something fixed and certain and absolute. So in order to be in relationship with the truth, we must acknowledge that there are no absolutes. We are complex, whole human beings who have the capacity for the rainbow of human emotion and the range of human experience and spiritual experience. And so I like to think of the truth as, as like breath or like the ocean. It's constantly shifting and changing and moving and evolving. So if I want to tap into my experience of the truth in any given moment, I need to be present. I need mm. to 
be listening because yesterday's truth ain't going to be today's wisdom. You know, like Ooh, not necessarily. Type that in, y'all. Hold on. <laughs> yesterday's truth ain't going to be today's wisdom. Type it in. <laughs> Type it in. Well, you know, Shannon, you tell this really beautiful story. Beautiful is the wrong word. Amazing story in the beginning mm. of your book about when the shower doors literally and your whole experience of truth and life kind of shattered in front of you. I would love for you to share this story with people because I think it's such a beautiful given of those moments when we're not trusting. So talk to me about it. Yeah, so so this story that opens the book of the glass shower doors shattering over me while I was trying to take a bath on my birthday um, illuminates for me and I think for a lot of us, how the truth, the truth wants to be known by you. The truth wants to be experienced and expressed through you. Your truth is meant to come online and alive in your body. And so when we are not in alignment with the truth, the universe or God or your innate power or your inner knowing speaks to us in whispers, in knocks and in sometimes loud, obvious thuds, rock bottoms, or glass shower doors. So I want I want oh. you to tell the story. Like, give us the scene, okay? Of this yeah. of yeah. this glass shattering, because this story is so ridiculous. It's amazing. Yeah. So the um, the the thud moment for me is it was my birthday a couple of years ago, and I. My, my friend, a really close friend of mine, canceled our dinner plans, um, canceled the birthday dinner plan. She was going to pick me up in her at my apartment in her like fancy new car and drive us to a vegan joint for dinner. And like, and I was so excited for it. And it was my birthday. It was your so, birthday. You know, yeah, of course. You're excited. So she she cancels and I get so deeply triggered, like abandonment comes up for me, victimhood, woundedness. Um, unworthiness, like everything that has festered in my body or had festered in my body for so long just came up to the surface in that moment. And I was enraged. I was frustrated. I was wounded. I was hurt. And so I was like, well, screw this. I'm going to take a birthday bath. And I was like, you know, I was like Epsom salts and essential oils and candles, like kind of getting the whole setup in a like you know which is hysterical with angry energy behind it <laughs> yeah i'm like the way you're saying it like essential oils and candles like get yeah. my fucking candles <laughs> yeah like yeah. i was like i'm gonna take a bath like yeah. <laughs> so um i am standing in the bath and i go to open the glass shower door so that it's you know open and it's stuck and my frustration you know, was what I, I was triggered. And so I was trying to kind of lift the door and move it so that it would move. And the way that I was handling the door, I, I certainly wasn't trying to break it, but my frustration was in my body and my body had this energy and the energy caused that shower door to break. And so I'm standing there in the bathtub and I look down and there's blood pooling into the tub. And luckily, it was, I just had a couple of like scratches. But in the moment, I didn't know. I was like, what's happening? So the glass like, literally shatters all over your body. All, I got rained on. Rain on me. <laughs> like rain, glass. Rain. Yeah. And then yeah. blood on your crystals. <laughs> blood on my crystals, blood on my body, blood in the tub. I was just like, woo, OK, 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 OK. I'm listening. I'm listening. And I, I instantly, I knew this was a wake up call. I was like, Shannon, this trigger is familiar. The glass shower door shattering, that's new, but the trigger, so familiar. And to me, you know, aside from glass meaning, gla glass shattering has the symbolic meaning of the shattering of illusion. That's one of the meanings of it. But for me, I also knew that this was the shattering of my capacity to hold on to these wounded narratives within myself without reckoning how powerful my energy is and how if I do not go inside of myself and work on healing these, the, these wounds around abandonment and enoughness and worthiness, then shit's going to continue to break. Yeah. And, you know, I want to pull a quick thread before you tell the rest of the story that you just said that feels really important that you had known that trigger before, that the trigger oh, itself yeah. was familiar. And so why is that important for people to be able to pay attention 
to when something that's coming up is repetitive? Like, what does that mean? What does that tell us? Yeah, well, you know, we we could very, I, I could very easily have been like, well, you know, that doesn't, this, this shower door doesn't mean anything. It's not connected to my emotions. It's not connected to my wounds. It's, you know, like maybe it's just a bad shower door. Maybe my, you know, leasing company just didn't install a good door or like, you know, I could, I could make it just literal, but because I felt the internal wound before I knew that it was a pattern mm. and and so this is what I invite people to do in the book. And I talk about in the fourth chapter, which is about emotions and um, leading with the heart. And I share a story of, of me reckoning with rage and, and patterns of rage within me, is that when we see a familiar pattern or feel a felt sense of a familiar pattern in our bodies, that's how we know that we have work to do. Sure. Like in life, sometimes there's, there's these one-off events and it's not just, just because you have some like casualty or intense, you know, situation in your life that it means that it's, you know, your fault or you're responsible for creating it. But when we have, you know, I talk about in the book, when the same trigger comes up with my dad and my ex and my sister, instead of being like, you know, screw all these people, that's information for me to say, Shannon, listen here. When, mm -hmm. when you start to see the same pattern, pattern repeating itself, that can be really frustrating, but it also can be a golden gift into where the work is. Yeah, and I think, I think one of the things that you're saying here, Shannon, that feels really important is like the, the element of, we talked about the universe speaking to you and your truth coming in all of these ways and whispers and in all of these different ways. So one of the ways that it illuminates itself to you in a certain way could be through these repetitive triggers and patterns and cycles. So, so often we think of our truth trying to come to us in this like love and light, white golden light of truth, like coming down to us at this like, ah, like awakening moment. But sometimes the way our truth comes to us is by the whole glass shattering down or by the continued triggers that help us actually pay attention to what's it trying to wake up inside of us. Is that what I'm grabbing from you? Yes. Yeah, because the truth wants to be felt and deeply known by you. And here's the thing is that for so many reasons, we have become skilled masters at numbing, at denying, at suppressing and repressing, at ignoring these signs from our own bodies, from our own psyches, from our own souls, we get good at not listening. Yeah. Because sometimes it's more convenient to be like, I don't want to deal with that. That's going to make a whole restructuring mess in my life. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. And so we want to stay safe. We want to keep things normal. And we're afraid of stepping outside of the box of our lives and having that level of transformation occur through us. Yeah. So there are, this is the thing is like, if we, if we learn to dance with the divine, mm. the divine messages that come through us, we can actually hear the whispers and we don't need to get the knocks and the thuds and the shattering of the doors. So Carl Jung says, what we do not consciously engage with becomes our fate. So anything we do not consciously engage with is going to have to come up outside of us as fate. But if we can learn to listen to the messaging within us, we can actually consciously engage with our, our souls and our psyches before it has to come out into the world and become a big mess. And it's, it's just like the thing of it, exactly. it, it while it's inside of us. We have the option to engage with it super deeply. I love that. I love that quote from Jung. And, and just having that, when you ignore it for so long, it's just going to be like, okay, now you can't ignore me. You know, exactly. here it is. You have to face it now. And that's how true the truth works within us is that we actually all are meant to be in alignment with our highest truth, with the truth of who we are. And so it's kind of cool that when we're out of alignment with it, there is like a rebalancing system that's meant to wake us up to the so, truth. So why do you think it is that we get out of alignment from this shit in the first place then? Like, why do you think that is 
a part of the experience for us? Yeah, oh, I have so many answers to that. <laughs> um, like, I think there's the intergenerational piece of like, you know, we carry in our bodies, all of us, up to nine generations of trauma and resilience because we are here yeah. and our ancestors made it. And so, and yet we have these patterns of survival that sometimes aren't healthy and have been playing themselves out for generations. And I just had, I've had this awareness around healing the toxic male lineage in my Irish Catholic family line. And I've had a lot of connection to my dad's father, um, my grandfather as an ancestor who's passed through my own healing. And I love to think about it like this, Justin, is we are the continuation, the living, breathing continuation of our ancestors. Yep. And they can't, in this physical plane, do their healing work now, right? Their time has passed, but we hold in our bodies the karma and the trauma and the resilience, and, and we can actually heal within ourselves the um, pain that has been perpetuated for generations. So part of it, I think, is intergenerational. Part of it is societal, yeah. you know, the way that capitalism often works and the systems that support capitalism is that we get so busy and that busyness and that achieving and that obsession with doing, you know, do, 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 I got to become something, I got to achieve something. It numbs us from the spaciousness that's sometimes required to listen. Yeah. And to hear and to oh, acknowledge. That's really the important. Honor. The doing numbs us from the spaciousness that's required for us to listen. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. You know, Shannon, I want to take you back to the story of the glass break. Because I know, because <laughs> what people are going to be shocked to know is that the story is not over. <laughs> and so continue oh. with the rest of the story and we can then unpack a little bit more of what this really means. Well, I was like, okay. I mean, so you have to just imagine there's glass all over, not only the bathroom tub, but the whole bathroom floor is covered in glass. It even went outside of the bathroom into the hallway. Like there was glass everywhere. And I had to tiptoe on the glass to get from the tub to the door. So I was like, this is like some rite, rite of passage. This is like, what is happening? And now the other half, because there were two glass panes that made up this covering of the door. And so the other glass door still remained intact. The next day, a couple of maintenance guys come to like, they come and like vacuum it up and they mop. And I mean, thank God for them. And they call me in to the bathroom, you know, 20 minutes later and they show me their work and it's like all clean and it's like, it's like lovely. I'm like, okay. And so I go and I step up to the other half of the glass door and I just look at it and I, I, I just touch it very gently because I have a lot of humble respect for the, for this <laughs> door situation. And the other, one of the guys grabs it and starts to kind of jostle it doing exactly what I did the day before. And before I could say, no, 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 no. It shattered on top of all <laughs> three of us. And that was like where I was like, okay, 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 okay. I got it universe. I got it. I got it. I got it. I won't, I won't let this go unnoticed. I won't like, let this be like, there is something shattering here. Um, yeah, it's big. I mean, it's big. The, the, the glass door shattering on you twice. So I'll never forget when Shannon called me telling me this story, like Justin, <laughs> You're not going to believe what happened. I know. And I was just like, what? You know? And, you know, one of the things that I want to say here for people that, that feels important to name just in how important your work is to me and to the world and to, I think, this community. Somebody said in here, get curtains instead, Shannon. No, I, I literally write that in the book. That I, I literally write, got it, universe. I will be responsible for my energy and I will use shower curtains from now on. <laughs> and Justin, you know this because you've stayed at my house now. I have a shower that has no curtains, no door. It's just yeah, an open shower. A big shower wide space. open shower. <laughs> a big wide open shower. So, Thank you to whoever said that. Yeah, it was great, Casey. And so, you know, I think what's really important, I just want to pull some threads for you guys here to show the connection. So one of my commitments in this community, and Alex is here in the chat so he knows, we get a lot of emails with people 
um, asking, you know, pitching themselves to be like special guests on the kingdom and like, can they come and be interviewed in this and that? And my answer 99.9999997% of the time is no, because, you know, I'm not the intention for the kingdom and what we're doing here is not for me to just come bring in every single person who has a book and like, let's interview everybody in the world, just who they are. I'm really building a collective and a community here and people whose work I've experienced, practiced, whose energy I trust, who I would trust with like handing you all like over to them. Like if you went and worked mm -hmm. with them privately, I would know that you were in really good hands. And so to show you all some threads here, because we've had some of these guests lately. So Shannon, Shannon has studied with Tracy Stanley and Tracy was one of our guests last week. Tracy Stanley, I met at Sienna Sherman's house when we were together for a holiday dinner. And you know what I mean? And I was at Sienna's house with Christy. So like I'm bringing you people here who have are so steeped in this work that it's not just about the Instagram memes and the quotes and the followers and the this kind of stuff. It's about really being able to dive deep into the transformation. And so the reason why I'm naming that here is, first of all, to make sure people know how, how much I think you're the shit, Shannon. And number two, because I would love to have you take a moment to tell a little bit of your story of how you have gotten to this place of coming from where you come from and the things and the adversities that you've gone through. And I know you have a whole book about them, which is why, you know, but just kind of like, how is it? It's a miracle that you're here doing this work mm -hmm. and with the level of integrity that you have. So I'd love for you to, to share with the community a little bit more about you and your experience getting here. Yeah, thank you so much. And I mean, I'm so honored to be here on The Kingdom and to be your friend and to be on this like soul journey with you, Justin, because I have so much respect for the way that you're bringing people together around community, around like community experience. Um, and I think that's just so necessary right now. And, you know, there's, there's a quote that I first heard from Sean Korn. And I believe she heard it from, she learned it from um, a spiritual teacher that she worked with who's now passed named Mona Miller. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned both Sean and Mona Miller in, in Trust Your Truth. And she says, um, Mona says, we, we learn what love is by first learning what love isn't. Um, and my experience also uh, is that we learn what truth is by first learning what truth isn't. And so I've had a lot of experiences in my life that have given me context for, you know, that's, that's not what I want. That's not who I am. And as painful um, and as sometimes traumatizing as those experiences have been, it's those experiences that have guided me home to myself. And so one example that I share in the first chapter of the book, which is called You Belong Here in This Body, um, is this idea that we can't always create um, safe containers in the very real world that we live in, like Mickey Scott B. Jones says. You know, we, we, we have to create a brave space because yeah. we can't always create a safe space. But as I've learned from Tracy Stanley, is that we can create a safe space within ourselves if yeah. we do the work to look at our wounds and our war zones that live in our bodies and give ourselves the medicine of the love that we've always desired and the love that we've always deserved. It reminds me of this quote I just say really quick that I, that I saw yeah. once. Um, it was an Instagram quote that I heard, but as I'm like, you know, <laughs> shit talking Instagram quotes, but it was a good one. <laughs> um, it said, uh, it's never too late to give yourself the childhood that you deserved mm. inside of yourself. Mm, 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 mm. Right? So anyway. And I grew up in, there were aspects of my childhood that were wonderful and privileged and, and just thank God that I got what I got. And there were aspects that were so screwed up so effed up and one of those is i grew up in catholic school in rockville maryland and i actually had a lot of great experiences there but those experiences were always in the context of of some intense bullying 
And because my name is Shannon, which according to all of my, not all of my classmates, but a lot of my classmates, was Shannon's a girl's name. And because I was effeminate and because I wanted to play with the girls at recess and not play football with the boys, I was called, and I, I like to spell it out, F-A-G-G-O-T, in case it's triggering to anyone. Sometimes it's triggering for me to just hear that word. Um, you know, you're gay. Shannon's a girl's name. I would get like pushed around in the bathroom. And so my body was not a safe place to be. And I received very specific messaging um, that said, you're wrong, you're bad, you're broken, you're different. And it was even sometimes affirmed, not just by the students, but by the teachers. In seventh grade, one of my teachers said to my parents, because I was into theater and singing and, and dancing and performing, uh, one of my teachers said to my parents in a private conference, because I was having some issues in school, she said, well, maybe if Shannon was just like the other boys, he would, wouldn't have as many problems. And, you know, and my parents left that meeting really appalled because she was asking me to be different yeah. and they loved me. And so we all have these experiences. We, I, I really, I, I really believe that we all have our own versions of how we are told to be something that is different than we are. And if we don't change ourselves and become what society tells us to be, then we will not be loved, accepted, welcomed, and enough. And so the, you know, everything has shadow and light. And I talk about that a lot in the book. So, you know, there's a lot that those, those external bullies became internalized bullies right. in my adulthood. Right. But the, the light aspect of that experience for me is that when, when you have the world telling you, at least this is my experience, when you have the world telling you this is who you are, I there was a part of me that had to go deep inside of myself and say, screw you. You don't know who I am. I know who I am. And it, if it weren't for those experiences of, of, of you know, harshness from the outside, I don't know if I would have had that deeper and deeper connection to no, 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 I'm Shannon and I get to decide who I am. And there is a musculature and a strength that I developed that can be a crutch now, yeah. but can also be like a very powerful energy to harness. This is beautiful. And, Go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. I don't want to interrupt you. Go ahead. Well, no. And so I just, I just invite us all in trust your truth and and just in your spiritual practice and your practice of coming home to you is that, you know, to create a safe and brave container within yourself, we have to be willing to look at some of these old messages that we received when we were young and give ourselves now, like you mentioned with that quote, Justin, like give ourselves now the childhood, the, the medicine that we needed then and still need today. That's it. That's it. And I wish you could see, uh, Shannon, what's happening in the chat box right now. People are losing their shit in here. It's amazing. <laughs> People are just in love. They're like, just hands are up, quotes are flying. And and we're really, it's, you know, it's so important to see that. And I think people are surprised sometimes to see that so many of us get this message. Like Casey just said it here in the chat box. Like so many of us get this message of like, we're not enough. Something about us isn't enough. There's something about us that has to be fixed. And that's a piece of that journey coming back home to ourselves. And I love in Trust Your Truth, in your chapter on, um, it's called Chapter 6, 2020 Vision. Uh, you go back, which I love this chapter. So one of the things about Shannon's book, if you know, if you see, I'll put, I'll actually put the book cover back up for a second here. And so it's a journey through the seven chakras. And finding with the chakras are energy centers in the body, um, different energy centers in the body. And each chakra has a different kind of element or um, a type of energy that it activates inside of you. And so Shannon takes you through each of the seven chakras and helps you find the truth that's inside of you, uh, inside of each of these chakras. And when you go into the third eye chakra, the Anja chakra, Shannon, like right here, the third eye chakra, you talk so beautifully in the book about this idea of belief and what it is that we believe about ourselves and what it is that, that it, and based on those beliefs, like what we hold to be true. And I just wanted to pull that 
thread a little Mm -hmm. bit more because you kind of talked about that a little bit um, in your last story. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, so thank you for naming the energy centers and the chakras because I really wanted the book to be this embodied expression of there is not just one truth. We have all of these different aspects of the truth that are alive within us. And so what's it like to go into these energy centers and explore what's true for you there? And so, yeah, in in the Anja chakra um, and the third eye is our ability to see clearly, our ability to discern what is meant for us and what is not meant for us, what belief systems are serving our evolution and our higher selves and what belief systems are outdated and maybe handed down to us by someone or something else. Yeah. And so, you know, we go through the process in that chapter of, of Sankalpa, which I learned from Tracy Stanley and Chanti Takarante Perez, my yoga nidra teachers who work together and, and, they learned this actually from from Rod Stryker, and it's such a beautiful practice. So a sankalpa is a purified intention without doubt. Mm. And so we all set intentions and goals like I want to make, you know, $10,000 this month or $20,000 this month or whatever. Like, I want this kind of relationship. And those things are totally fine to want, of course. But sometimes we set intentions from a space of lack within us. So it's actually the wound that's creating the desire so that we can feel enough. Mm, This is big. And so when we set a purified intention without doubt, a sankalpa, we're actually looking at the wound interacting with and there's a process in the book of going through to get to this sort of like core belief that's not serving us and then we give ourselves the medicine that we need through the sankalpa and so instead of setting a goal of intent or intention out of the wound and to kind of just put a band-aid on it we let the sankalpa be the medicine that seeps into the tissues and into the bones and offers healing to body, mind, psyche, soul, spirit. Mm. And so the way I weave the yoga nidra practice into the book is another practice that I learned from Tracy uh, is placing the vibration of your medicinal sankalpa into the 61 points of the body over a 40 day period so that you can receive the medicine of your truth of this new belief system, not just as a belief system that you repeat in your mind, but a belief system that you let soak into like your own. Use it into your cells. This yeah. is amazing. This is amazing. I, I just love your work so much, Shannon. It's so integrative. Like it just incorporates so much. Like we're working with the chakras, we're working with the nidra, we're working with actual psychology and you know, the, the whole practice, the yoga, the traditions, all of it together. I think you all are really gonna love Trust Your Truth. Again, just make sure you go to, I'm gonna put the link here up for you again. Just go to trustyourtruthbook.com and grab Shannon's book. You can get it literally anywhere books are sold and uh, it will just be such a huge deal. Shannon's, it was really beautiful to see you and Tracy Stanley. So a couple weeks ago, Shannon posted a screenshot. Tracy Stanley's book was number one and Shannon's book was right there at number two, right? Is that where it was, yep. Shannon? And then yep. it's just like on Amazon. <laughs> which was so cool to see you two sitting there together, you know? And, um, you know, I actually loved if I can share something I had wrote to Shannon. I said, oh my gosh, Shannon, look at you guys, like number one and number two. And I was like, I should have had you on the podcast first, or on, on the kingdom first, and then Tracy to like, make sure you hit number one. And you just said so beautifully, you said, no, something like, no, it's time for the black woman to take the lead. Or something like that. And I just thought that was so, you were like, this is exactly right. And it just shows you've been deep in the social justice work. You're deep in the trauma informed work. You're deep in all of this work. And we're so grateful to have you here. And Mm -hmm. what I would love, Shannon, hmm, let me listen to my truth real quick. Because I was going to take us to a practice, but something else wants to come. Okay, so I'm going to ask you a question that I was, that I was maybe not going to ask you because I didn't want to challenge it. But Mm -hmm. I, um, So, because I think this will be a really good thing to explore, especially during this time, okay? So I was in a training yesterday 
it really interesting timing, and I didn't even connect the dots until just now, about literally about the difference between what they call assertions and assessments. Whereas mm-hmm. they say assertions are something that is true and verifiable. Like, for example, an assertion would be like, Justin is five foot 11, right? Like I'm five eleven. like you can check that, you can measure it. Like you get a ruler, rulers have been like approved as a standard of measurement. Like we don't change it's the size of rulers. Quantifiable. Yeah, it's just like, it's a, just a fact. And, and like assertions can be kind of boring. And then they said assessments are like what we say the meaning of things are, or they're just sometimes our opinion, or they're changeable, or they're different, or they're not verifiable by any authoritative source or anything like that that we consider to be an authority or that we can all agree upon or trust. And that a lot of us base our lives, our lives on assessments instead of assertions. And so for example, I'm 5'11", is an assertion, is what they would call in this model a truth, or but I'm tall is an assertion, I mean is an assessment. So I'm 5'11 is an assertion, I'm tall is an assessment because tall, okay, compared to who, compared to what, who decides what's tall. If I was around a whole bunch of basketball players, would I be tall? Like who were six, seven? No, I would be, I would be short. So it's something that can change. And so I just thought it was interesting given the time that we're in right now in the collective where there's this inability for us to agree upon truths. For example, is it or the is it the vaccine or is it a no vaccine? Is Black Lives Matter this or not this? Are the police doing this or not this? Did the did they kill George Floyd or not? Did this happen or not? Like and so there seems to be a slippery slope around the definition of saying truth can change because if it's true, if it is actual truth, shouldn't that mean that it just like applies across the board to everything always? And everything else is an assessment. I'm just curious what you feel about this. I just want to throw this in the in the field yeah. for us. Oh, this is so juicy, and yeah. I love I love that you're bringing this. This is so important. This is so important. Um, and thank you for that about assertions that which we can measure and assessments that which might be uh, an opinion or an idea. Um, it reminds me of quantitative and qualitative research, something that I'm learning in in psychology grad school is, so quantitative research is our ability to measure. Justin is 5'11". We can like prove it, you know, without a doubt. Qualitative research is a lot of the work like that Brene Brown does. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, Brene Brown says that data are, 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 sorry, stories are data with a soul. And so those matter too. Our experiences matter. And we can't always measure our emotions, our experiences, our, our truth in any given moment. And, but here's, here's what I can say about this is that it's not a binary of like one is right and one is wrong because both are valid. And we have learned time and time again that if we just pursue a quantitative, what would be more traditionally like masculine, patriarchal, mind dominant, measured approach, we don't always lead ourselves to where we want to go. Yeah. Or and, and not even where we want to go, but where we need to go to evolve into who we are being and who we are becoming. And on the same token, if we just go off of like the wind of feelings and whispers and and gut intuitions all the time, we might not have that structured container that we need for consistency for for a version of the truth. Yeah. So I think here's here's the common ground. Here here's where we have to come back to. Humility is the path to healing. Yes. I was hoping you would say something like that. Thank you. Yes. I really believe this because, because if, if all the quantifiable assertion people go on this side and all of the, uh, quant or, or qualitative assessment people go on this side 
And then we have these divides and we're pointing, you're wrong, you're wrong, I'm right, I'm right. We have moved into absolute binary land and we are losing an aspect of ourselves, which is that both of these things can coexist and have value. And we actually need both in order to come home to the truth. So, you know, with me, there are plenty of people who I think are wrong, are crazy, are harmful, are, I, I could go there. And I know that if I divorce myself from them, that in and of itself is a is a fissure, is a harm, is a divide. And so I think like what's possible if we all come back to the humility of what am I missing about your experience that I have no idea about? Yeah. And I really think, and this is why I love the work that you're doing, Justin, it's and, and it's so important, is that if we have the capacity to come together, to be together, even in our difference, especially in our difference, yeah. and to welcome our various truths, this is how we become whole. This is how we heal, is through this willingness to be with one another and learn from one another and humble ourselves to say, well, I actually, I have the quantifiable assertion data but I'm not going to call you an idiot because you believe something different. Mm -hmm. I'm going to meet you where you're at and see where we relate. Yeah. And if we can do that, we can do a lot of meaningful work in this world. <laughs> yeah, I agree. And, you know, I think one of the things that's so important um, in this time, and, and this is why I'm actually very careful around who I even bring into the community is like, we need to, in the personal growth world, I think it's important that we are, like very rigorous in what we're teaching as things to be true. Do you know what I mean? And what people are following, especially those of us who have a voice and or we all have a voice, but those of us who have, let's say, a bigger platform or a bigger following and even each of us as individuals to really show like what is really true and how are we, especially with all the conspiracy theories and all these different things out there right now, like even though there is this place for us to stand together and listen, there has to be some kind of standard for how we look and identify and verify, like, is this something true, you know, that is leading us in a positive direction. And so, yeah, well, and that's so important too, because there are some things that are out there that you're like, what? Yeah. But, but I don't want to separate from your humanity, right? Like that's the, that's, that's the it. edge. That's it. I don't want to cancel you. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. I might need some space from you. We might need to take a timeout. <laughs> we might need to take a breath. Yeah. And I might also need to use my voice to say, I don't think this is okay. Yeah. But I'm not saying I don't think you are okay. Yes, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's the, and that's us setting the boundaries and being able to hold them in a the right way that I think uh, I gave a quote a, a few months ago from Nico Carey that said, setting boundaries is my ability to love myself and love you safely at the same mm. time. Mm. And I just mm. thought that mm. was so mm. beautiful, you know, to say that. And so beautiful, Shannon, I think this is a perfect moment for us to dig into a little practice with you. Um, just a short five minute practice or something like that, I think would be appropriate for this. And um, I'm gonna just give you the screen and, and take it away. Okay, well, thank you, thank you. I wanna thank you, literally like you here with us, with me, with, with yourself. Thank you for being here. And let's just take some time to, to tune in, to tap in. Um, so whatever that means for you, if you want to find a comfortable seat, if you just want to take a moment and pause, whatever you're doing, just to let yourself check in with your body. And so let's start by taking a deep inhale together. And exhale out the mouth. <sighs> Inhale, receive oxygen into the lungs. And exhale, an audible sigh. <sighs> and once more, deep inhale, filling the whole body with breath. And then taking a moment, just hold that breath in for a moment, suspend the breath. 
and exhale, release. And sometimes in conversation, we can really engage our minds and there can be something satisfying about that. So let's just take a moment now to breathe into the body and to remember that there's so much that we don't see, that we don't feel. There's so much in the background, behind the scenes, underneath the surface, in the ocean of our wholeness, in the ocean of the unconscious mind and the psyche and the soul. And any time that we take a moment to breathe, to pause, to listen, we can begin to consciously engage with what we might be missing. And this is the practice of humbly creating space to listen, to feel, to breathe, and to maybe even hear the voice of our truth, of our inner knowing, of our soul selves. Maybe noticing the breath moving deeper into the body. And perhaps feeling the navel moving away from the spine as the body inhales. And feeling the navel moving towards the spine as the body exhales. Feeling the body's capacity to breathe for you and with you. Whether you remember to breathe or not, the body remembers to breathe. And just now, allowing the awareness to settle right at the heart center. And perhaps imagining you could breathe directly into the heart and exhale from the heart space. And just sensing for a few moments here that you can tap into, tune into, remember and know your infinite nature, the part of you that will always be, that will always glow, that will always expand and grow and know. And just for a few more moments here, perhaps imagining an eternal flame right around the space of the heart. And on your next exhale, letting that go remembering you can always come back home to you with a few moments of stillness, of breath, of listening and remembering. And begin to wiggle the fingers and the toes, maybe circle the ribs or the arms, invite a little bit of movement back into the body. And we'll inhale to reach the arms up overhead. Take a big, beautiful stretch upward, connecting to what is above you and beyond you. 
And then exhale, we'll bring the hands right to the center of the chest, palms press, bowing the chin to the chest, honoring and acknowledging the wisdom and intelligence that lives within the body, the mind, the heart, the soul. And may the peace that we've cultivated together in this space and internally within ourselves be offered externally as a unified intention and vibration and prayer for peace in our relationships, our communities, and our wider world. And deep full inhale. And exhale, letting it all go. And when you're ready, let your eyes open. Take in what you see. Thank you so much. You're amazing, Shannon. <laughs> Everybody, mm -hmm. I would love for you to type in what, what came up for you in that practice. Did anything arise for you? Any insights, any feelings, sensations, anything you feel called to share? Just type it into the chat box. And Shannon, um, you know, this is our moment to talk about our action. You know, and it's mm. one of the main elements of the kingdom that we're not just here to be inspired. We're here to take an action in our lives. And so I know that you have a, a great action that you are ready to share with our community as a step that they can take to move forward in their lives after they are finished listening to this session today. Mm, 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 mm. I love that. And like, I love the meaning of inspired, it, it, the Latin inspirare or inspirare to breathe life into. And so each of us has been given the gift of breath being breathed into us, that life is being breathed into us. How dare you not go do something with that? You are called to act. And so the thing that came to mind as the action, Justin, like really loud just now was do you go do you. And if it's okay, I would like to not tell you what to do, but rather invite you to very consciously and tangibly connect into what are you inspired to do today and to go do it. Get out of yourself and do that one thing today, no matter how small, that will bring the vibration of this energy that we have cultivated together to someone. And let me share a, just a quickie of, Please. I didn't do this yesterday. And it, you could say it doesn't really matter, but I had the, I said, Shannon, bring a book with you and sign it and give it to the cash register per, at, the, at the grocery store at Whole Foods. And I just didn't do it. Cause I was like, Oh, whatever. I just need to get groceries. Maybe she doesn't want the book. And as I left, so I, so I didn't do it. And as I left the um, connection with the person at the grocery store, at, at the cash register, this that book was totally meant for her. Like, I just know based on our conversation, she was like this, this sweet gal that she would have just like lit up if I had handed her my book. And so don't not do it. <laughs> Like, it might not make sense. You might be like, am I really going to go do this? Am I really going to buy this person a matcha or just hand them a book? Or like, what if it's awkward? Go do whatever thing you're called to do today. And I'm really learning from my lesson yesterday. I'm going to lean into that impulse and bring the book with me, sign it and give it because who knows what could happen next. Mm, I love that. I love that, Shannon. Go, everybody's typing in, go do you do that thing. And I hope you're going to go back and give that lady the book. <laughs> oh yeah. Literally. I got to find her. her. You got to yeah, just yeah. remember what time you went, what day you went. She probably has that shift next week. So oh next, God, Saturday, next Saturday, next, next Saturday, Saturday afternoon, you have a date with the cash register woman at the book to give her your book, to trust your truth. So you have a second chance at redemption. <laughs> right? Yeah. We always do. Yeah. And then you're going to tell me like, it was so awkward. She was like, I don't want it. I don't believe in the chocolate. She was like, I'm I actually kidding. don't read self-help. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh. Well, Shannon, we love you so much. Thank you so much for being here with us today. And everybody, I want you to make sure that you take a moment to go grab Shannon's book, the Trust Your Truth book, trustyourtruthbook.com. It's right there for you. And Shannon, you are 
just a light in my life and in this world. And we're so grateful to have your work here in the written form that we can all take in forever and ever and ever and ever and always. And I know that the audiobook that you read, so your incredible voice is uh, gonna be on there. Um, the audiobook comes out very soon. It's already currently on ebook and in paper form. And uh, I just wanna remind all of you as we're closing, especially because I know some of you all came in a little bit later that uh, we have a really special event happening in this community this coming Saturday on March 13th, the Love Over Fear concert with me, Alonzo, and Tito Ray. We are doing a benefit concert live streamed online, raising money for children who have lost their parents to COVID-19. And so it's a big deal. This, is, we're, this concert is actually happening on the one year anniversary of Pandemic of Love starting and of the World Health Organization naming COVID-19 a global pandemic. It's happening on the one year anniversary from that. And so this is a pre-Grammy event to honor the lives that have been lost and to really help support all of the lives that remain. And so you can register for that. It's pay what you can, 100% goes to families and you register for it at stageit.com slash we just will. And uh, we are just so thankful that you are here as a part of this community and that we're able to support each other to be communities of care, to continue to rise together as we support all of these incredible causes and missions and each other's art and work. And this is what our community has the power to do. We're 1,300 people strong here and so many more people listening on the podcast and on the replays. And know that wherever you're tuning in from, we love you. And this is the power of truth. So as we close out with our closing prayer, I'm going to put him on the spot. But uh, Shannon, might you close us out with our closing blessing today? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. And Justin, I just want to tell you that I love you. And on behalf of all of us here, if I may speak on, on behalf of all of us, we are so grateful for your consistency, for your commitment, for your heart, and the way you continue to show up for the community offering space for us to be together, especially during this time. So just thank you for the energy that you bring and the wisdom and the passion. It's so deeply felt. Love you. I love you. So let us close, everybody. Pray Let's us away. Shake out. <laughs> we should start all of our energy. prayers like this. <laughs> <laughs> Shimmy for the divine. Okay. So what? <laughs> I just had so many jokes go through my head. Anyway, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You're going to call me and text me them after. Okay. Let's inhale. Reach our arms up. Let's take a big stretch. And exhale, put your hands wherever you want to put them, on your heart, on your hips, on your belly, on your chest, wherever you feel called. And let us remember that our gathering, that our collective energy has the power to transform ourselves and our world, and that each of us matters, that we are enough. And may we remember that when we connect to the medicine that we need, that worthiness, that, that love, that compassion, that desire, that longing, that peace. When we give ourselves that medicine that we need, we become stewards and we become able to share that medicine with every human being who we come into contact with, with our loved ones, with the people at the grocery store, with the strangers on the street. And may we remember that the truth lives within us and the more and more that we come home to the truth that lives within, the more we embody the heart of the courageous warrior, the one who's willing to bravely listen. May we bravely listen. Thank you all so much. May you be happy. May you be free. May you all find peace and joy in doing you. So it is. Mm -hmm. Ashe, aho, salam, amen, satnam, shalom, awen, om. Thank you in all the names. Kingdom family, we rise together. I love you all so much. And uh, I will meet you right here in this special place in our next session. Mwah. Bye for now, everybody. <laughs>